The mistake of the wrong data type is rarely one that causes data corruption in a database, but what it can do is cause all sorts of performance dramas in the database. And here's one of my favorite quotes from my predecessor, Tom Kite, good friend of mine, worked on Ask Tom, obviously. Amazingly, the date data type is a good one to use for dates. Here's why I wanted to talk about the date data type in particular. And it pertains to how the optimizer works with the database. Now, before I talk about the optimizer, let's talk about humans for a second. For humans, cardinality is everything. You, I imagine, are just like me, we have to go shopping from time to time. Those of you who do online shopping, I have nothing but disdain for you. But I'm, 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 I like going to the shops. I like getting you know, the basket, I go to the shop and I you know, grab some things. And of course, when you get to the checkout lane or where you had to pay, you don't just walk up to like you can see on the screen, you don't just walk up to line 10 because for a start, there's no one manning that one. But even if there was, what you do is you act like an optimizer. You scan along, you have a look and you are saying, okay, what's the best option for me? I've got lane 10, 11, 12, 13. What's the best one for me? What's gonna get me out of here fastest? And you might see oh, lane 18, there's just one person there, looks like they haven't got much, and you sprint down there because you think that's gonna be the best option. And of course you get there and that one person, oh, if you're like me, always, you know, that person has the trolley from hell. They've got a million things or, you know, the trolley looks empty, but they're all like, they've got 5,000 little tiny items and you're going, oh, there goes the rest of my afternoon waiting for this person to get their shopping paid for. It is exactly the same for the optimizer. As a human being, I made an estimate. What was the best option for me? It was aisle 10. If the reality does not match that estimate, if the estimate was bad, I, I thought I'd be through there fastest, but I was wrong. That's when the optimizer goes wrong, just like human beings. If the estimate doesn't meet reality, that's a disaster. Bad estimates means bad plans. So how does it come back to the wrong data type? Okay, let's do another demo, looking at what happens when we don't use smart data types uh, for dates. So to show you the issues with the most common mistakes we see when it comes to data type selection, I'm gonna create some tables. The first one is string date. So I've got a column here called X, I'm gonna store some dates in them, but I'm gonna store them as strings. I've got a table called number date. A lot of, especially third-party applications, which wanna be database independent, will store their dates as numbers. And you can see on line five, as for line four and string date, I'm storing them all as YYYYMMDD. So I can store them as strings, or I can create a table called number date, which stores them as numbers. And I can have a table called real date, which unsurprisingly, I'll store that same information, the exact same data in all three tables, but the last one, I'm actually storing it as a date. Let's whack some indexes on so everything's in alignment. And we can see they actually have the exact same data, just in different data types. On string date, we start at 1995 and we go to 20, the year 2206. So 2206, that's a couple of hundred years from now. And the same in number date, the same in real date, etc. So the data is identical. And here's where the wrong data type when it comes to dates can be such a, an alluring but damaging thing. Let's start with this first query. I'm looking for all the dates between 2005, 7th of January, and 2005, 14th of January. It's, so it's a week, seven days. The optimizer came up with an estimate of two. It's not perfect, but it's reasonably close. You know, a couple of days, seven days, it's not years, we're pretty good. Let's look at the number date, pretty much the same estimate two days for the same deal. When I look at real date, it's not correct either. It didn't come up with seven, it came up with nine. And here's where the justification often stops. I'm looking for a week in January, string date was reasonably good, number date reasonably good, real date about the same, maybe a touch better, but therefore who cares? Here's where things get so damaging in applications when you don't use the right data type. Let's now look at 31st of December, the year 2000, 1st of January, 2001. So it's a single day. I've chosen an example where it spans a year. It doesn't really matter whether you span a year or span a month. Obviously the database has no idea about that kind of information if you're not using a date data type. So now the database thinks you're 326 rows. Now that is miles out. Let's look at the number table, same issue, 326 rows. 
And unsurprisingly, when I look at the real date, I'm pretty close. It's a one or a two day differential, depending on how you want to phrase it. And I'm in the, I'm in the ballpark. And this is where non-date data types to use for dates are so bad because they'll be great for some days and horrible for other days. And you'll never really know. It's when they, go, they cross those invisible boundaries of months, weeks, etc. So critical that you use the right data type. You might be thinking, well, maybe I just need to add some more statistics on those things. So let's jam some full histograms onto string date and number date. That might help you, but in this case, for example, looking at that same example of one day, the string date got a little bit better, went from 320 rows to 263, and the number date didn't get any better at all. So it's so critical to pick the right data type. And we could do similar examples here where the critical thing is a number and someone used a string, or the critical thing is a string and we used a number. It doesn't really matter. The key thing is choose the right data type for the right job, and you're generally gonna have a much happier optimizer. If you've inherited an application which has strings for dates or has numbers for dates, you might not be able to control the application code, but what you might be able to do is add virtual columns which transpose that information to a real date and then your own code, your ad hoc reporting, Apex applications, etc., they might be able to use the virtual columns which will be stored as the correct date data types. If you're worried about that breaking the application, then what you can do is you can make those virtual columns invisible as well. So the application will never know that there are extra columns added, but your reporting, your views, your Apex reporting, etc., will be able to take advantage of correctly data typed columns.